Nathan's videotaping us walking in. It's cool. So I'm videotaping him, videotaping us. And neither of us are using video. Welcome to the Ludington 8 in Ludington, Michigan. The first time all three of us have been together. On this episode of Movies Are Spiritual, we are trying to understand the movie Insidious Chapter 5, The Red Door. There's a lot unspoken in this movie that if you don't know some of the background information, it's hard to understand this film and it won't be as interesting to you, like the details of astral projection, origin of demons. So we're going to explain that to you and talk about it. And this episode is a very special episode because we are all here in person. What's up, man, Doug? Yeah. Hey. This is Doug. This is Drew. <laughs> Drew is our trivia guy. And Doug, what's your specialty? 80s movies? I'm the heartthrob of the group. <laughs> and I am the That's theology the nerd. nerd. What's good? No, I am. I'm the movie nerd-ish. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of other people who know a lot more about movies than I do. Nonsense. But out of this group, I know maybe a minuscule more than Drew. <laughs> so I'm the movie guy. <laughs> you guys are going to have to duke it out later. So we actually saw this movie earlier today. And this movie, the first thing we should probably talk about is Astral Projection. Astral because you kind of have to understand that to get the most out of the movie. If you saw the first movie, maybe you kind of know the details. But... What do you guys know about it, and how does that play into this film and understanding it? What I remember from the first movie was just that uh, the father and the son were able to go to a I different... The nether... The further. The further. The further. <laughs> and it's basically like an alternate dimension, another plane of existence where your spiritual body goes, your physical body stays behind. And I remember them going in and being trapped and trying to figure out a way to get out the father carrying the son through this darkness with just a lantern and like the painting of the end of the movie just like the painting at the end of the movie and also the main villain like the first time you see him he shows up over the shoulder of the dad and he kind of looks like darth maul (laughs) everyone thinks that he really does i think they call him like lip lipstick face face demon demon. yeah lipstick face demon. lipstick face demon. great name (laughs) <laughs> couldn't think of anything else what do you want to call it i don't know lipstick feet. that's great <laughs> call them the mall <laughs> i've actually we've had this conversation about astral projection and stuff like that and um so it was cool watching the, uh the first one the first time because we had that conversation before i watched that one and uh yeah it's it's some weird stuff that i'm somewhat interested in knowing about but i am terrified to even think about trying it because stories I've heard is that is a good way to get possessed. You've left your body. And so you just have a shell sitting there for something else to pop in. And, you know, and again, you know, you hear stories. I don't know if this is true or not, but I did have somebody tell me a story about the time that they tried it. And the furthest they could go was float above their body. And they're sitting there looking down at their body and they said they literally looked back at them and smiled. So their body looked up at their astral projection and smiled. And people say that's kind of the first step towards uh, possession. And again, you know, I don't know if the story is true or not, embellished, whether this person was dreaming, but... Whatever the case is, I don't, I don't feel comfortable trying it. <laughs> well, I've actually talked to several people who have tried it, huh? and some, all of them have had a disturbing experience. So some of them quit, and one of them continued. And what they experienced, I would have not continued after that. So I'm just going to tell you that story. Sure. So a friend of mine who I knew for several years, she was astral projecting, So you can learn this by practicing lucid dreaming and dream journaling. And apparently that exercises the part of your brain where you you can control your dreams. And the next step is to actually leave your body. So she was doing this and she started to get good at astral projecting. And she says that while she was out of her body, 
a demon tried to have sex with her body when she was out of it. So, so she the, uh, incubus. Yeah, but well, you, know, you yeah. know what's so interesting is that that's basically the origin of demons that we all often talk about in ancient Jewish theology mm-hmm. is an angel mates with a human and produces a half a half angel, half human being. And then when that being dies, their soul is disembodied. So they, they look around for a host, right? So that's what lipstick face demon would be if the movie was going with the oldest origin of demons. We did mention an alternate take, which was, uh, in, in, there's like a, what is the, this? I guess this is like an underground view in Catholicism. It's not the mainstream view, oh, but yeah. <clears throat> Adam and Eve, Adam had a first wife in, in, this, in this theology, and her name was Lilith, and it was thought that her children were the first demons. So that's a less common, mm-hmm. less accepted view of the origin of demons. But the other one I was talking about is basically the disembodied spirit of that angel human hybrid being called a Nephilim. Oh, interesting. So with your friend's story though, while she was out floating around checking stuff out and this demon comes back and finds her body void of a soul or spirit or whatever it is, how did she know that the demon was putting the moves on her? I don't know. I mean, she said, <laughs> like, we'll see it. you meet other entities and you can kind of tell, I guess, by their aura if they're good or bad. Mm-hmm. But that was creepy yes. enough for me to not want to try yeah, it. I don't think I'd be trying that. One of the other stories I heard was a guy who, who tried to astral project and he wasn't successful for a long time. And then he finally was. And it was so disturbing to them that he just quit. He yeah. wouldn't do it again. But there, there are scientifically peer-reviewed research papers out there on this. So it is hmm. thought to be a real thing. I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know exactly what it is. But, I mean, if you think that there is a spiritual realm, spiritual realm and a physical realm, yeah. then I guess the idea is that your spirit is traveling over from the physical realm to the spiritual realm. So it's like like two parallel worlds. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't think I'd try it though. Yeah. No. <laughs> so none, of us, none of us want to try it. That, yeah, that's not that's what it. that's what's rough, roughest for me is I want to believe people. I do. I, I truly believe that people, you know, want to tell their stories and everything like that. But at the same point You'd have yeah, to try they, it to yeah. believe it. I mean maybe it's just a really bad dream. I don't know. And see, that's the thing where it's like, I, I am interested in knowing more about it, but I'm too scared to try it yet. I don't know if I believe them, you know, again, you know, that comes down to the same thing with ghosts. I mean, Drew, Drew grew up with a ghost. I believe him, but I don't know if I believe in ghosts <laughs> because it's like, I've never had that happen. I want to experience that. Yeah. So. Well, sometimes you have to have that experience to, be a a real believer in things like that. So, I mean, I'm not, and same thing with like the astral projection. Um, I've heard some other people tell me stories of what something that they have done. And it's like, again, is this just a really vivid dream that he just had? Or is this something that he actually, you know, actually did? I don't think he was intentionally doing it. It was just something that just happened. Well, in the movie, when they're showing like the dangers of it, Mm -hmm. I mean, that lines up with what I hear about it. So that's kind of interesting. But if you, it helps if you know about astral projection and that it might be a a real thing. Because if if you don't, that's not going to scare you very much in this movie. Right. But if you've heard some of the stories that we have, then it becomes that much freakier and that much more real, I guess. So, well, why don't we talk about the beginning of the movie? And so you guys, you've seen the first one. Yes. Have, have you seen the second one, too? I have seen the second one. And you one. haven't seen the second one. I have one. not seen that one. So I've seen them all. So or three or four. If you're going to watch, just basically. Watched four. Oh, I thought we watched five. Uh, yeah, we watched five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He thought he was watching Insidious I thought I was watching time. four. <laughs> so the, it's confusing. Who knows more about movies? Though? Because the, I guess the Insidious trilogy would be movie one, movie two, and movie five, The Red Door. So 
movies three and four, I be, well, I think three is a prequel, but four is definitely a prequel. Three is a prequel yeah. also. Okay. Yeah, it's all about the older lady, right? Yes. So I told you, since Wait. you hadn't seen two, I was like, well, that's basically just a Shining ripoff. Wait, Which I believe the lady at the end of this movie was the one that they may have been. So one of those couldn't have been a prequel, though, right? Because she was in... Didn't she speak with... Was she in one and two? Talking about the lady at the very end yeah, of the movie? Yeah. That was her was, spirit that he saw at the end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. But, yeah, so but have, wasn't she in part one and or two? She died at the end of part one. Okay. So, she. okay. So, okay. Then I forgot about that. So, then, yeah. So it's been a while since I've seen him. I'm sorry. We'll bring that end scene up at the end because we have to talk about what that means. Because she's dead when she appears. Mm-hmm. So, we have to figure out, okay, what are the rules of the further and what are the rules of the afterlife in this movie to try to understand it. But basically you've got the first movie and the second movie, the father, Josh, he tries to kill his family just like the shining. And I didn't like the second movie. I thought it was just kind of a shining ripoff. But when we get to the beginning of this movie, they pick up at the end of that movie and dealing with the psychological damage of what happened i found that to make part two more interesting so at the beginning here you've got josh and dalton who have had their minds wiped right they did yeah they went to a hypnotist yeah who had them forget everything that they experienced and they actually explained it off that dalton was in a coma that's how they experience that's how they explain the fact that he can't remember being 10 years old is you were in a coma, but what actually happened was he was hypnotized and that entire year, and even for the dad, was just completely erased. Yeah, so they, they lost a whole year's worth of memories so that they wouldn't remember Josh the dad trying to kill the family. But it was hard for me to figure out that not everybody in the family had their memory wiped until later in the film. So it seems like Dalton lost his memory, the younger brother, and Josh, but not the wife and not the grandma. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, but I think the younger brother was just too young to remember it. Yeah, okay. he didn't get hypnotized, but he was because when he called the back and he's like, "What do you remember of?" And he's like, "He should talk to mom because I don't think he remembered a lot of it." Yeah, hmm. I think okay. he was just, like, too young to remember everything that was happening. So when the movie starts, we see that Josh and Renee are already divorced. Right after we're in the present, right after we've seen they've had their minds wiped. That whole Ten years year, later. Yeah, yeah, that whole year is gone from the hypnotism. But since they're divorced, I took it like, oh, they probably would have stayed together and endured if not for the hypnotism and having that year erased. So some ramifications of that may have actually caused them to have to separate. Because that's what I found intriguing. Because <clears throat> think about this. They're subconscious. Like, they knew their dad tried to kill them. And you, if you erase that from their memory, it's probably still in there in their subconscious. They had, they had dreams, right? Mm-hmm. They said they had dreams of their dad, like with an angry face or trying to kill them or something, but they didn't realize that that was a real memory back there. So it was affecting how they saw their dad. Right. Right. So that memory is still in there, but they lost their explanation for what happened like that. It wasn't actually him, mm-hmm. that it was him possessed. They, they lost that explanation, so then they, they can't get through it together because they can't explain what happened. Right. I, I thought that was an interesting premise to well, they, start with. Yeah, they kind of alluded to that when Rose Byrne's character actually finally accepted or, you know, admitted to the fact that, yeah, I was there, you got hypnotized, and we kept it quiet, myself and your mom, because... That was a horrible memory that, you know, the kid going to the further and then the dad trying to kill the family. They just wanted that out of their minds. But Rose Byrne's character still had, what's her name? I keep saying <laughs> Renee. Renee. She had to live with that. And she had to look at a man who tried to kill her every night. And I don't care how strong you are. That's going to take a toll. And it's, it's yeah. probably better for them. Yeah. And plus, he was struggling. He was getting foggy. He was forgetting stuff because of this uh, mind wipe. Yeah, I was going to say, that's another part, the toll that it played on him, not having a memory of an entire year. He thinks he's crazy. 
And a lot of times, I mean, if you, if you think that, I think, I, I believe that if you consider, if you think you're nuts and you think you're going nuts, you drive yourself nuts. It's possible. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And trying hard to remember what happened here and why is my relationship with my son the way it is and why aren't we close and why aren't we, he knew like his dad wasn't around. He thought his dad had abandoned him and he always said, I'm going to be a better father than my father was. But so why isn't this working? Not realizing that they actually had a really, I mean, that's like a big time bonding moment. Really. If you think about it, he and saving his son, that's something that would bring these two even closer together. But because they don't have saving the dad in the second. Yeah. It comes back around. And that's why eventually that made them closer again. But they take that away and now they they're like strangers to each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you catch when Renee explains to Josh why she divorced him? She says basically she did it because the kids couldn't cope. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's what I felt like she was saying. Uh-huh. It's not because she couldn't cope. It's because the kids couldn't cope with whatever this distance was with their dad. Yeah, that she couldn't keep explaining yeah. to him and lying to these kids about what the problem is. Yeah, so I felt like, well, she she might have stayed with him if she could have, if they could have figured out how to keep those memories and work work through it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, this is an interesting premise because, I mean, it, it, it basically what happens if you were to like throw away some memories and and lock them away and not deal with them. Mm-hmm. So I found that. Interesting, because we're, we're seeing the ramifications of that and the last movie. Uh, well, I'm, when I say the last movie, I'm really meaning part two, because I'm looking at one, two, and five as a mm, trilogy right. there. So what is the first scary scene we saw? The MRI scene. <laughs> yeah, which is terrible, because so I had an MRI right before I watched this movie. And when I go back home, I have to have a follow-up MRI because they found a cyst in my neck. So I'm watching this like, oh, no, please don't. Don't make my next MRI. <laughs> Complete torment. Yeah, I, as soon as they uh, showed that scene, they're like, okay, you're just going to get in here and we're going to slide you in. I just looked right at me and like, <laughs> we looked at each other like, oh, I'm going to call, call your wife and I'm going to have her talk to your doctor in about 20 minutes in. He's just going to kill the power and she's going to go completely black. Well, here is my first question. <laughs> I'll just have to bring you some extra pants. <laughs> you know, in trying to explain the movie and what's happening to Josh, what was that that he saw? And how is it at all connected to the plot? It looked like an old lady. It, Yeah, it was, he, he's in this dark tube and the power's out and he's yelling for the doctor to turn the power on. And at one point you could see a hand like come down over his shoulder and then he's looking up, looking up, looking up. And I was expecting to see a face and yeah. there was nothing there. And they keep showing his feet. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, here comes this like old lady, like up into the tube and crawling. And I don't do crawling things, crawling things anyway. <laughs> so I, that, that. <laughs> I didn't like that part. I don't know who that was. That could have just been another soul who died at, the hospital or something, you know, because maybe he's they, psychic. Just trapped there. Mm-hmm. He has a psychic ability. Well, the astral projection, they explained it maybe in the first movie as like he has like a psychic tendency. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I don't think it was the same old lady that they showed later. No, I don't think so either. Okay. So it truly is like a separate entity that he saw. Yeah. And there's a maybe. couple times in this movie where they show. Something like at the very beginning of the of the movie, they're at a funeral for his mother who has passed away. And he gets into his car and he's watching videos, you know, of his son when he was a baby. And in the background, you see somebody Somebody. walking. They look like the dad. And now I'm thinking back. I think it was the dad. But at Um, first I thought it was the woman. I thought that it looked like whoever was back there had had long long hair too. And that could have been. I I just saw kind of longer dark hair. Yeah. Oh, hey, Barbara Sheriff, she's going to be in there. That's what I thought. I thought it was his she mom. Barbara Streisand. But there's Her all sh- these <laughs> these like spirits that show up throughout this film. You know, his dad makes an appearance because we find out later that his dad actually was going insane and took his own life and happened right after, shortly after, I guess, Josh would have been born. Were they tied together? Like, did – because, I don't know, I got a feeling when they – you know, he saw his dad, it was like, oh, you dealt with this 
stupid demon too. And now, but you weren't able to handle it and you ended up killing yourself. I was about to kill my family, but we worked through it and now we're good. Mm -hmm, Sort of. Um, Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So, because I mean, that's how it kind of felt it. Because it was like, he was there. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have really been, would he have been there if he wasn't part of that? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's. His his dad shows up in in his house as a ghost. He thinks he's an intruder, yeah. You know, and he ends up going to like you know the archives or something like that. And he's going through newspaper clippings, and he finds out that the guy that was in my house attacking me was my father. Mm. And it's maybe that's a way of his dad showing up as a way of like you know helping. Like, hey, this is what happened to me. I'm going to show you myself. You find out what happened to me. Maybe opening that red you. door caused a lot of evilness to come out yeah. and cause the, you know, the ghost at the hotel or the hospital, you know, maybe that was just some lady the, who didn't make it. And it was just like, uh, oh, hang out yeah. here, go get some jello. And then the door opens and it's like, Oh, I'm, I'm evil now. Yeah. Well, so I'm gonna see, crawl. There was also the ghost that was at the frat house too, that we saw. So well, there are a couple there. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's, it gets a little confusing on, cause a lot of it happened when they were in the further, but then you're seeing also ghosts outside of the further, and it kind of does get a little bit yeah. blurry on what. And he's not where we're at on that, you know. He's not outside his body. He's not astral projecting when he's in the MRI. He was physically there. So no, that, he, no, he was no, astral he projecting that one. He did. He did. The fall doctor asleep. say he fell asleep. So, but he, but he didn't. He wasn't when he saw he his didn't dad leave his body. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, so he, he might. I mean, he sat down. He was just like he was doing the memory. Oh, he was doing the memory thing. He didn't step. There. Yeah. So. That's, and that's unless he just passed like, out. That's where it's kind of like what tired of playing match game. Yeah, I guess I could take him seeing his dad at the beginning to tell us that his psychic ability is starting to get warm again. Mm-hmm. You know, he hasn't used it for a while. He's had fogginess, and we know he's got this gift. And all of a sudden, it's activating for whatever reason. So here's a possible explanation: Dalton is about to have the same thing happen to him at the same time. You know, he's starting to discover, rediscover his psychic ability, his astral projection ability. Well, as soon as he does that, that demon is going to come after him again. And the old woman, this is the part I'm a little foggy on. Yeah. um, Because I haven't seen the second one for a while, but in the second one, that old lady's son was dressing up, as his mother and so sometimes you don't know when you see the old lady if it's actually the old lady or if it's the son and i don't know how that's connected to the demon so the second one is different than the demon knocked off the shining and psycho sounds like yeah (laughs) yeah so they kind of put all these things together and they even bring in some things from poltergeist there Hmm. are some some quotes in this movie I was like, oh, that's an idea they took from Poltergeist from the, you know, going to the other side. That's how they're making the further. But what if the dad at the beginning is starting to manifest himself to Josh because he needs to help Josh protect Dalton and he knows that Dalton's abilities are starting to get activated and this demon's coming for him. Mm -hmm. That's what that's why that father killed himself. So he's going to help Josh heal his family as opposed to you know, let what happened to him happen to Josh. So you're saying he attacked him just to kind of wake him up? To say, hey, go find out who I am. Now that part was confusing. So it makes me wonder, was he really attacking him or was he trying to get him into the closet so he finds that box? And Because he pushes him in there and then he, he did. And it. I think that's what it was. Mm-hmm. I think he was trying to like find this box. You're going to see the picture of me. You're going to look me up and find out who I am and realize I didn't abandon you. Yeah. Well, um, can you just show him and it to him? And yeah, that would have been you a know. quick 30-second scene at the end where he sees his dad. His dad could have just been like, smiled and been like, Sorry, I attacked you, but I needed you to find that box. Yeah, and if and then disappear, never be seen again. That explains so much. Yeah. But now yeah. we're left with what happened here. What I mean, we can make assumptions, and, and it seems like that. Yeah, he was trying to just be like, let me put you where you need to be. But yeah, tell us. Yeah, I think some people. I mean, even me, I, I want to be told that. I 
you know, I think we figured it out, but at the same point, we're not 100%. We just mm-hmm. want to know the rules. Like when yeah. can and can't they physically manifest? The spirits physically pick up an object in the real world. When yeah, I guess you see him what's open, his name? you see Dalton open a door. Yeah, well, he played the um, piano oh, yeah, blower yeah, thing. But see, that is not necessarily a contradiction of angel, demon, ghost lore. Going back to biblical stuff, because theology is kind of my specialty, angels, they can physically manifest themselves. They do in in Bible stories because Mm -hmm. there are times where people are eating meals with angels and they don't know that they're not humans. They appear as humans. So that tells you that physical or spiritual beings can actually manifest themselves in 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 the physical world. But we don't know, like, for how long or, you know, yeah. like, they, they, they may have limits, but we just don't know what the limits are. So when I saw the door open, I wondered, okay, what are the rules in this movie? But I do know from theology that there is room for a spirit to be able to move an object. Okay. Interesting. So we had to talk out the scene where Chris and Dalton find a ghost in Nick's room because right I couldn't yeah. figure it out from what Dalton said. I thought that the ghost was Nick. So then I was trying to figure out, is there no time in the further? Can he see the future? And this guy's going to die. But you reminded me yeah, of it, a line in his speech. When he's given that speech, uh, he kind of ends it with, Hey, everyone make sure you pace yourself. We don't want another incident. And that's about the only reference they make, but, you know, it's a very prominent one. So you know that something happened. And then when he goes into the bathroom and sees the dude just unloading in there, that was, he was really sick. Yeah. Um, he made his way up into yeah, the next room. That's when it was like, oh, that's the incident he was talking about, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, frat houses, there's always um, somebody getting alcohol points yeah, and people like die that. in frat houses all the time it yeah, happened yeah. when i was in college yeah. yeah the thing with that is though he went up into that room and it's like it doesn't take much for him to fall asleep or do whatever it is that he has to do because he was he went up and he like hit under a bed yeah that, and that immediately was he's thing. like oh i'm actual projector and, you know, well it that. was that countdown that his art teacher did yeah. oh yeah they count down the, from 10 and he sinks into it yeah. you know so this is an interesting thing in in actual astral projection people that get good at it like they can kind of do it when they want to when they're i, I don't know if you you may have to fall asleep i don't know but they have more control so yeah, he picked it up pretty quick <laughs> yeah but him yeah. he doesn't exactly have control yet and he he does at times but he has to rely on an external countdown or something to trigger it mm-hmm. you see that in this movie because he's forgotten he can do it so he's naturally gifted but he doesn't know he can do it on command and he doesn't understand what's happening when he leaves his body right so i i thought that was kind of interesting you're, you're watching someone who has not mastered their ability yet right now there is a scene involving that ghost though in the fraternity yeah that 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 i did not understand oh yeah i had to turn my head so here's something that maybe maybe they rewrote part of this movie maybe they cut it normally in a horror movie when a ghost or a demon vomits into a character's (laughs) mouth that symbolizes possession oh so that's the tricky part because dalton does get possessed but not right then so no, it's like, later on he does, what yeah. the heck was that so i can't figure the movie out can you guys explain no i didn't know that all i know is when i saw the kid show up over him i immediately turned my head because i knew what was about to happen <laughs> and i'm not watching that see if he didn't get possessed <laughs> then i feel like they should have cut that because that that's a known trope mm-hmm. and so they didn't follow the trope but then it didn't turn out to mean anything mm-hmm. right yeah, he ends up getting possessed at the end. There's not a whole lot of explanation on who's doing I think they were just going for a little gross factor. It's I like so you know, too. our jump scares or I mean there's no predictable. There's no blood there's or not gore a lot at it's all. So in it's this. like let's yeah. So I did I'm, like how when he goes this is an earlier scene, he goes to uh, look at a light. Like, why is my room red? And the, the, blood. the light bulb had blood on it. I thought that was cool. I thought that was kind of unique. That was a little creepy. And there's a handprint on the bed sheet. Yeah. And it's like, where did that handprint come from? Right. You know? So we yeah, could talk about the art But they scene. never really talked about it. But that. they didn't where explain did, why any of that either. Why was there blood on there? 
know. And yeah, it was just, and then, yeah, during uh, getting back to the frat scene, again, you're talking about the rules and it's like, okay, so far the, uh, the kid and the dad are the two that are being affected by everything. But then out of the blue, Chris tr- starts getting choked out by a ghost through a door. And it's like, I don't, and it's been a while since I've seen one and two, but I don't remember anybody being physically attacked who, you know, it was uh, Barbara Hershey, uh, the, the dad's mom would see lipstick guy and then the dad and the son, but that was it. You, um, I don't think Rose Byrne ever got attacked by something supernatural other than her husband being possessed. No, because that's why she didn't have to have the hypnot, you know, being hypnotized because she didn't go, go back, there yeah. and see that. So why was Chris able to be choked out by something, a ghost or something from the further? So from here, I can borrow again an explanation the theology, but I can't get it from this movie, right? Mm-hmm. So if I borrow from theology, Dalton drew the demon to him, but then the demon can physically manifest into you know the physical world. So so briefly cross over into the spiritual world, like an angel would eat right. a meal with someone, and then attack someone else. So there's an explanation for it well it started theology well it started attacking her before he was even he was still in the other room yeah but his body's over there his body was his body was oh okay so they were trying to get to his body and they're like oh there's a person let's try this one this one's (laughs) close i don't want to walk all the way over there yeah (laughs) i don't know this lady i don't know if they attacked her just for suspense in the movie or because the demon thought that chris was going to protect Dalton's body. And then explain that. I mean, it was an hour and 47 move, uh, minute movie. Yeah. So you, there could have gone deep. That that was my biggest issue with the movie. I didn't hate the movie by any means. I love the acting. I love, I can't think Patrick of the actor's Wilson. name, Patrick Wilson. Um, always loved what he did. Uh, of course, uh, the kid, Ty uh, Simpkins, I think. Is him. he the kid from the first movie? Is that Did they actually let him age up and then... Oh, yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. So yeah. that was the that kid was from the, the same oh, kid. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's what was that was one thing that was cool because I don't remember in part two did they end the movie with them getting hypnotized? That I don't remember because that was Ty Simpkins as an eight year old in that scene where they're getting hypnotized. I don't remember that. They may have filmed it and just never used it in the movie. So they could have done that, or they had some really good CGI because that you know he was like nine years old. 10 years old when that happened. He's 25 now or something like that. I should have watched the second one before this, but I really thought like, eh, that's just a shining rip off. Yeah. <laughs> but I loved one and I didn't, didn't hate to, yeah. I didn't hate to, I mean, I had fun with it and I, I liked two better than this one personally. Interesting. So uh, we'll, we'll have to debate at the end, which the, Oh, you haven't seen it. You uh, have that other was, I don't know. Well, we're getting into let's talk what about we the art about scene it. first, okay? Because um, we we've got the painting. Let's figure out how the painting connects to the door. Somehow, the the painting is basically like an avatar for the red door in the further. Yeah. What, did you like the art teacher? Because the things that she said, like unintentionally, had meaning with this whole further drama, and I thought that was kind of cool. I don't know. First off, I'm I'm tired of the whole. <laughs> Teacher coming in and being like, blah, 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 blah. you're wrong, you're out. No, my parents paid twenty thousand dollars for me to take this class. You shut up and teach me. Yeah. No one kicks, exactly. kicks a, a student out thirty first, seconds into first day. The, yeah, that's just in, they, they do that in movies all the time. It's like I'm the mean teacher. I'm I'm the guy that's going to teach you how to play drums, and I'm mean. You know, I mean, no. I, I have actually been through that, not at an expensive private school, but when I went to IEPY, I had a speech teacher, and the first week, she was really mean and strict, and like I was like, oh man, I'm not going to enjoy this class, and she scared away 
as many students as she wanted to that she thought wouldn't actually complete the course or that do the work. Sense. And then all of a sudden a switch flipped and like she was a normal great She's teacher. But out she the ones terrified them there. for like, like one or two weeks. That makes sense. I get that, sense. but what he what she did to this kid, yeah. Very first picture he looks at and it's a great drawing. It was the best was one like, there. She's like, that's oh, a really good drawing, but it has no meaning or it's this and this or you can see it's so deliberate you're not getting into it. So, you know, rip it up. He, goes, he stands up for his work going, no, I worked hard on this. So she kicks him out of class. I, like, I agree what? with the kid, but I also know that if, if you're trying to be the best, this is who you want to study under. Cause it, it goes to that idea. There's some story kind of like an audience of one type story about a, a concert violinist and he's playing for this huge audience and everybody stands up and applauds and he doesn't care because he just wants his teacher to stand up. And applaud. That's the only person he's trying to impress. Yeah. So they've taken that story and weaved that into this art. Scene yeah. Here. Well, I mean, then Dalton ends up just without being asked to just rips up his picture of his grandmother. Perfectly good picture. Excellent picture. And then she goes, why would you do that to such a perfect picture? It's like that dude's was better than no, mine. <laughs> my, my guess so is I don't... there was a deep meaning behind his. Cause he, intentionally made her stare look like she was hiding something. Mm -hmm. They mentioned that yeah. like she knows that the family was hypnotized, but he doesn't know what it is. So he, he, I mean, if you think about it, if you're drawing that, like, you know, their secret and you don't know what it is. So you, you make them look yeah. like they're holding something in. Like I figured that's what she noticed that she's like, there's something mysterious about this face that you drew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But getting to the door part of it though she does her countdown she's like don't let the chalk move or the charcoal whatever they were using don't let it move off the, the canvas and she does that countdown from 10 to 1 he gets down to 1 I mean he's just frantically drawing and he's drawn the door that you know you can't open and so it's like that part of that subconscious came back and he still doesn't even know why did I draw a door all things but that's what came well, from inside of him she that's what knew. she said that was the weird thing so again with the scene maybe i missed a couple things but first off did he really cut his hand or was that i actually thought something came through the door and punctured his hand so something came through the drawing and, okay. and punctured but his hand. i didn't see like a uh, bandage the rest of the show because when he showed his hand i mean it had a huge yeah. gash in it it looks like the hand was barely there but and, like his teacher not concerned about that? Yeah, like you, you or the blood that's all finish. over his painting. Yeah, you know yeah. he was drawing with charcoal, and all of a sudden there's blood, blood dripping down, and she just like, "That's beautiful. are you trapped behind it, or is something else trapped?" Or I are can't you, remember exactly. Are you, is it keeping you in, or oh, keeping yeah. you out? Keeping you in, or keeping something else out, or something like that, or whatever. Yeah, but it's just like th there seems to be a lot of cool things going on they just don't give you an explanation. I don't know if he was trying to go for just figure it out on your own and the way you see it, if that works best for you, run with it. But you know, it's little things like, like that blood scene or like, um, you know, why does, why can Chris get choked out? You know, it's like, go ahead and do those things. I have no problem with that, but give me an explanation. And I don't need somebody to sit there and read and be like, all right, what happened here was blah, blah, blah. No, you, but you can tell it in the story. Have a scene where um, the whole time the main, the kid never talked to his mom, never called his mom or mm -hmm. anything. You know, I think they alluded that, but you know, that could have been a quick 30 second scene just talking. And, you know, right after they figured all this out and it's like, look, when I was going through all this stuff, were you ever attacked? Well, your dad, no, no, no. Were you ever attacked by something you couldn't see or no? Then what's going on? You know, I, that would have been fine. Mm -hmm. Just leaving us in the dark, but they never just, they never mention it. It's like, oh, I got choked out and now I'm mad at you, but I'll be back tomorrow <laughs> and everything will be fine. And it's like, no, can, just tell me something. Just tell me. Yeah. Because I, I, I enjoy trying to figure out movies, but I want to know if I'm right or wrong. And we've talked about 19 different theories today. It's hard and to we watched that. this movie like six hours ago. And we still don't know 100% yeah. on everything. So it's like, I enjoy doing that, but I want to know who's right. 
or we need a little closure know. at the end of yeah. it like that. And it, it, it just went boom, boom, boom. They Done. could have added an extra 15 minutes to the movie Easy. just to kind of flush some of that out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool to try to figure out what's happening. But yeah, by the end of the movie, I shouldn't be walking out with like, wait a minute here. I don't understand exactly this, this, or this, or this. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot, a little bit of confusion in some areas. I like that if the answer is in there and I can find it on a second viewing, although a lot of people might be lost if it's not more spelled out. Mm -hmm. But if these ideas are presented and they don't go anywhere, that's when it gets hard. Right. I, I wonder if the teacher's quote about, you know, is this door keeping something out or keeping... Which keeping is, you in or keeping you is it keeping you in or keeping you out yeah i wondered if that linked up with the whole the grandma had the secrets is she protecting you or is she hiding something from you and he at that point doesn't know what the do door is either mm -hmm. so he doesn't know if he's inside the door or if he needs to go through the door i mean has he actually astral projected at this point not uh no i mean i hadn't come back to him yet well right at well it happened, I think, right oh, afterwards. Yeah. So oh, yeah. the audience he hangs it up, and then he he hangs the that's right. Yeah, he hangs it up, and then it's like yeah, it happens. Yeah. And he doesn't really know like what is going on here. Yeah, the 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 one drawback here of this part of the film is the audience has seen the first movie. So as we watch him rediscover, it's cool if you haven't seen the movies for a while, but you already know the answer. Like you you don't know. I didn't know who was going to be on the other side of that door? Will it be the same demon from the first movie? Mm -hmm. And I, I thought it was probably going to be the Darth Maul demon again because we haven't seen him in, in several films. You know, they've been doing those prequels. You're wondering, where is this demon? Mm -hmm. And so I, I assumed it was probably going to come back, but I didn't know. So there was a little bit of mystery, but not a lot there. Yeah, I mean, I think it hurt a little bit that I haven't seen three or four because I had no idea what the red door is supposed to even signify. And you it's said, the entrance to the further. Okay, and you said the old lady opened it up. Mm -hmm. She opened a red door. Oh, in the prequel, and that's what brings it to where they're at yeah, now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. But should have had a movie party and watched all three. Probably should have. <laughs> I thought there were four. Well. Part three and four are not necessary for this. Sure. Okay, so... Well, we need to know that she opened the door. Yeah. Because we didn't know what the door was if we only watched one and two. I don't think they alluded to the door in two, did they? The actual red door? I don't remember a red door. I don't remember two well enough. <laughs> That's how much I thought of it. So Dalton, he's gotten curious enough about what's on the other side of the door even though he knows it's dangerous and Chris has warned him, you got to stop digging into this. He can't help himself. So he wants answers, especially since he's got this missing year of his life. So he goes back into the further. He keeps painting. I, I felt like at, the, at this point, I would probably stop painting, stop painting. you know, <laughs> but yeah. he, he keeps adding to the door. Yeah. <laughs> painting somehow brings him into a relaxed state where he begins to, astral project right yeah so that's that's as far as i know not the typical way people astral project i guess it's similar you go you meditate basically mm -hmm. so i guess water calms painting, you relaxes yeah, you it could put you into that and then he doesn't make it what does he does not make it back to his body before something else no he gets locked up so he, yeah he somehow made it into like the lair of the demon yeah and they shackled him there so he can't get, get back, back to his body but did they well, did they, they show us enough to show that something then took over his empty body that's probably i'm guessing what happened he mm -hmm. he goes back and, he, and this demon is making him relive well and that lady said so he earlier he had watched this video to kind of figure out what is going on with me and he sees this video of this lady talking about the project, you know, actual projection. And she says how dangerous it is because the further you go into it, the more dangerous it becomes. And she says some of these people who are stuck there, they want out and they can smell the living and they are going to come after you. And so you have to be very, very, very careful. And when he projects this time, he, well, he remember he had, um, 
on the door, he had painted a picture of a guy holding a hammer, not realizing that he had just painted a picture of his dad. Mm -hmm. And he finds out from his brother who was having these memories of like, Hey, I remember dad chasing us around with a hammer. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I just painted that. So he projects and he ends up like having to relive that moment in the basement of his dad coming at the family and he can see himself trying to get into that state of mind as a kid. And the dad's got the hammer ready to go. So he tackles his dad and then he wakes up in this layer and he's shackled to the floor so he can't get back to his body. And that's when they flip over and you can see his physical body stand up with, you know, the, the girl in the room with him and he just he gets possessed and becomes a demon. I mean, the demon face was cool, but yeah, we're all just sitting there and as the lights turn on and off and I knew it was going to happen. Drew leaves over and he's like, demon face. <laughs> and then third time, demon face. Demon face. <laughs> but it was cool the way they did it. Yeah, it was cool. It was so yeah, so he got shackled, so he couldn't get back to the physical body. Right. And uh, as you mentioned, when you're gone, you leave yourself open. I don't know what demon it was, but something went into his body. I don't know if it was the demon or if it was the old lady because we saw mm. her but yeah they didn't actually show a demon taking over his body or, or entering it i i would have liked to see that so we could one clear up who possessed him yes. and, and two we could clearly understand the rules because see i'm borrowing from astral projection beliefs and theology to answer mm -hmm. how he got possessed because from just watching the movie, you would think that just because he lock, got locked up, that's what caused him to get possessed. But I feel like they spelled out in the movie that something can't occupy your body if you don't get back to your body mm -hmm. or if you leave your body. So I feel like that idea was there and it wasn't shown. Right. Uh, do you think, do you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, 100%. And interestingly, in, in like biblical theology, so you know, you know the idea of the Holy Spirit like dwelling in people. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the idea that like God lives in you, right? Well, I mean that's that's the opposite of like a demon living in you. And they they also in biblical theology, there's a story in the New Testament where I think Jesus casts a demon out of someone, out of a possessed yeah, person, pigs. and says something. Or it's a different one, I oh, think, one? where he says something like, "Well, like you, like an empty house, you have to be careful because seven more demons could come and enter that house. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have to fill that void with something. So, in biblical theology, it's God. Yeah. So that, that's an interesting. There's always something, a spirit." Like dwelling in you, it, hopefully it's good. Right. right. That's so. interesting. Yeah. Well, I don't know about always, because then that implies that everybody else is possessed. So, right. So that must not be correct. But we, <laughs> you kind of get get an idea. You need to have something you, in there. You can house a spirit, and it's not always a bad thing. Right. Okay. So he gets possessed, and then his dad finds out. So his dad projects. I see him unconscious. I can't remember how. He's, they they just cut to that. That was another thing. It was they didn't even talk about his dad going under. His dad was just sitting in a chair with his eyes closed. Yeah, just cut to that. because he was, I think that's about where I went to the bathroom, but I don't remember a discussion of him going under. He was getting ready to leave. I mean, they did and have a very stressful discussion. Yeah, the mom and dad were having a discussion, and yeah. he was just packing up and ready to leave. And then uh, next thing you know, they they flip over and it's. Like, I gotta go save my son because I know he's he's in there now. Well, I, I came back to the part where the son came in and said, "Is that you?" Yeah, that's what it was. He came in and said, "Is that you?" And he realized that his son has painted that picture of him. So yeah. he's like, "Oh no, I gotta go save him." But so they dang. all rediscover the memory that was wiped at the beginning of the movie. They all rediscover what happened in Insidious Chapter Two. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So dad decides I need to go help him, and then they just show him on the chair. Oh, and he remembers how to astral project like that. He did. He just, I'm there. Yeah, so I was like, did I look away from the movie screen and miss something? So we're all on the same page there then. Yes. Okay. But I do like how he goes into the further to save him. And it's interesting that 
he actually travels some distance to get to Dalton because Dalton's away at school. Mm -hmm. So in astral projection, I was, we were debating, well, what are the rules? Like, do you just walk away from your body and then come back? Like, can you, can you go downtown? Can you go long distances? And at least in this movie, I mean, I don't know the answer to that in reality, but in this movie, he traveled all the way to I mean, Dalton like, School. I think they said it was like a two-hour drive up yeah. there, so. Yeah, it's not close. So I don't know if it I takes mean, him two hours or if you can just, I'm there. Yeah. I've always heard of, and uh, they alluded to this in uh, actually Stranger Things with Eleven, was the uh, CIA M- MK Ultra project. That may have been part of it, or MK Ultra might have been. I can't remember. But anyway, they were dealing with trying to do astral project. An actual CIA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like in uh, Stranger Things, they're in America. They're in Indiana, apparently. But she is he- seeing and hearing Russians talk on the other side of the world. So, yeah, I don't know if too much about astral projection so i don't know if that's one thing where it's just and and again maybe well that kind of takes away from it but you know i guess if you get better maybe you can just pop up wherever you are but the dad found out 10 minutes earlier that oh i can do this okay all right (laughs) one two three four (laughs) four that is based on an actual cia project and i haven't looked into too much but what i've been told is they tried to get people to like see codes that were far away Mm -hmm. Hmm. and with with some degree of success is reportedly what happened so that that implies having sight of something that's far away and that's kind of freaky if anybody watching this knows anything about astral projection please feel free to let us yes yeah comment because we are interested. <laughs> We're interested, but don't want to try it. Yeah, I just don't want to do it. So, yeah. Just tell me. But yeah, it, it, that that last scene, though, his, his dad goes under, finds his spiritual self, and was able to free him. And then they have to run, and they have to close that door. And the dad was ready to sacrifice himself for that. So, you know, that was a good message. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do. I mean, I've talked about that on every other podcast we've done, (laughs) but I do, I, I, I appreciate that the love that someone has for somebody else. And they're just willing to be like, all right, this is it for, for my son to get away. I'm going to have to die or be stuck here. Whatever the case is, I'm willing to do it. Worst case scenario. I'm, I'm game. So Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, but I did like the fact that they didn't kill off the dead. Because the dad, or, you know, in that situation, it seems like they always die. And, you know, that's that's a good way to end a series is to take out the main character. You know, you, Iron Man, no more Iron Man. He's gone. Except for the most person, whatever. But, um, you know, that's, that's what they do. The person's going to make the sacrifice and that's, they're going to give their life. And... It wasn't that. It was the son saving the dad, just like the, or the opposite from the first one when the dad saved the son. Now it's the son's turn to come back and save the dad. So I kind of dug that. Yeah, it was a good ending. It was a nice, nice little ending there. I also liked that he had done enough to show his son that he would die for him, but then didn't have to. Right. So he did enough that his son realized, oh, my dad loves me. Mm-hmm. And he understood maybe what happened in the first movie. So I liked that a lot. There is a confusing scene that we should talk about, and it's where Dalton is reliving his dad trying to kill his younger self and his brother, and he thinks that he's about to die. His younger self is about to die because his dad's got the hammer. Is it a hammer? It's a hammer. hammer. Yeah, and he's getting ready to, to take out younger Dalton, and older Dalton stops him. Now, I realized this scene has no ramifications in reality, in the physical world, unless, you want to mention your theory? Unless, if the, I guess if the dad kills him in this area here, that it could possibly kill Dalton in the real world? Yeah. Maybe? We don't know. Or, as Doug said... I, I think it was 
either uh, somebody mentioned a distraction, yeah. a way to keep him from not going back to his physical body, or two, the demon needed him to truly interact with the further. And the best way to do that is for him to have to save himself or, you know, tackle his dad to not finish off what, you know, killing him. And by doing that, the demon's able to trap him, therefore taking over his body. So, but again, they didn't don't really explain. They it. didn't explain. It was yeah. just like, I'm tackling you. I'm in chains and hiding under a table now. See, I get yeah. why. Why? I get that the demon had to imprison him somehow, uh-huh. but I didn't quite get why the scene from the second movie was there. It was good to see, to remind us mm-hmm. what happened. Cause like, if you hadn't seen it now, you kind of know what happened. The only thing I could think of was maybe this scene reliving that distracted Dalton so that he would get in prison. That, so that's what I took. Yeah. Out. And I, and actually this just kind of popped in, you know, we talk about how demons will try to confuse you. They will try to, um, you know, they'll say things and do things to, to make you doubt. Mm-hmm. And by doing that again with him, maybe that's just putting that more doubt into his brain that my dad is this bad guy and I can't trust my dad. And if my dad comes in here, I've got to do something to him to get him away from me. So, I mean, it could have just been deception. I don't know. Yeah, they just, they didn't really tell about how he got trapped and therefore not able to get back to his body and get possessed like the dad did in part two. Mm. Um, Now, I don't remember part two that much. But maybe that was the same thing that happened in part two. I can't remember exactly how the dad gets possessed in part two. Because I saw it once a long time ago. Yeah, I don't remember how, but the son so has may, Maybe, maybe if we actually watched the first and second one again, <laughs> maybe they threw did a lot of throwbacks to that. And just because we haven't seen it in so long, we yeah. missed them. I can, I can and use some truthfully, that, that's a mistake on their part because, I mean... They were good movies, but they're not movies you want to go back and watch every few months or every year even, you know. It was a decent horror movie, but I'm not going to watch it 15 times. I think the first one has rewatchability, but that second one does not live up to the first one. End of part one. Intermission. End of intermission. He looked different. Yeah, you know what? Now that you mention it, you guys look a little different too. Did you shave? I did not shave. What is it? Hmm. Bill Gates actually sabotaged our podcast last night. So we're back with part two of our insidious The Red Door discussion. So one thing I wanted to touch on is I read a lot in the critic reviews of this movie and the previous insidious movies that people were really disappointed because they wanted to know more about the origin of the demon. And this is something that's not really explained in the movie. Now, a lot of movies, demons are evil for evil's sake, right? But see, I actually found the movie fairly satisfying if I carry in the origin of demons from theology because the movie doesn't explain that. So if a movie doesn't explain the origin of a demon, I feel like it's okay to bring in my own or or the accepted origin of demons right Mm -hmm. so in in the motivation of demons from theology from christianity judaism all that people don't realize that demons are really trying to extend their life that's why they're messing with humans so from a biblical perspective demons know they're doomed because at the end of time the book of revelation god's gonna destroy all evil destroy demons right So the only thing that they can do, since they know they're doomed, is try to push back the clock. So what they try to do is they try to prevent God from reaching all people from all nations. So they mess with people. They try to slow down his work so they can live longer. So that is, from a biblical point of view, their motivation. So since the the movie doesn't give its own demon motivation, I carry that into the film and feel that satisfying. But if a movie creates its own motivation for a demon, I take that, right? Yeah. So then we kind of sussed out what happened in the further 
So we've got two demons in the further. We've got lipstick face demon, which we call Darth Maul. He's Darth Maul. Right? And we've got Parker, the the guy that dresses up as a bride from part two who possessed Josh. So we think what happened since the movie doesn't really show which demon went into Dalton in this movie, we think that Darth Maul, Darth Maul demon imprisoned (laughs) Dalton and therefore he couldn't get back to his body. And Parker, the same demon that possessed Josh in part two, possessed Dalton here in this movie. And the way he was able to do that was because his spirit had been imprisoned in the further by lipstick face demon, Darth Maul. So you described Doug. And he's a, basically the warden. What his job is, is to capture and hold on to souls so that Parker can take over the body. I'm just making stuff up off the top of my head with this, but I mean, it seems like that's the way it's going because nobody was possessed in the first one. The demon just kind of showed up and it's like, okay, I'm here um, trying to trap this kid. And then we find out in part two, Parker shows up and possesses Josh. So it's like, okay, so we might've seen Parker in part one. If lipstick mall succeeded, (laughs) but uh, Josh was able to get in there and pull his son out before Parker was even introduced is kind of the theory we're running on. (laughs) It seems to have continuity between the three movies. So Darth Maul demon, lipstick face demon is not trying to possess people. He's trying to trap souls and Parker is trying to possess. He wants the body. Mm -hmm. He wants to become a part of the physical world. So I think, I think we've made sense out of that. We still cannot figure out what that MRI demon or ghost was. We don't know if it's a ghost or a demon even. Mm -hmm. We looked at pictures side by side this morning over breakfast, comparing Parker to the demon or ghost that appears in the MRI machine. And while there are some similarities, they look like there are also some differences. So we think that's just a random, it's a good scare, but it's a random scare that they put in there. Could maybe a ghost at the hospital or yeah. a ghost. Yeah. Or maybe to explain that Josh's psychic abilities are returning. Yeah. That's a good way. Yeah. All right. Well, what about the end here? The family comes back together. It seems like they might actually get back together. What yeah. Do you, think you know, of that? Uh, they kind of allude to the fact that this is the end. And, you know, she, as you know, you can pick up the kids next week or blah, blah, blah. And as he's walking away, she turns like, you come early and have dinner with us. And, you know, and it's like, she, I, she still loves him. I, I truly believe that. She did not want to divorce him. She's not happy about being divorced. She just had to for the sake of the family. So now that that's passed, now it's time to focus on mending the wounds. All right, this family should eventually come back together and be happy because now the boy understands what he's been dealing with for the past 10 years. Uh, Josh understands, you know, all his things. He understands what happened with his father and that everything that's happened over the past 10 years that made him think he was a bad parent had nothing to do with him. You know, it's something, it was just totally out of his hands. And the fact that he was this, uh, ability was blocked by a hypnotist that's why he's been so foggy because he just he can't be who he truly is or truly was so uh yeah i think you see a nice little uh that's where it just starts and eventually everything will be back the way it was Mm -hmm. i think i think so too i really like that they set that up too because josh when he learns the truth from renee He actually says, we could have gotten through that as a family. And I liked that, okay, they made that mistake 10 years ago. They actually correct that mistake 10 years later. So I really liked that Mm storyline. It's not super developed, but it's there. Yeah. I liked that. Yeah. There is one other thing that I like about this film, if you follow Dalton's story. So this thread is barely there, but there's one line dropped at the beginning where Dalton implies, well, the dead don't think about anything. They don't care about anything. 
as if he's now become an atheist or doesn't mm-hmm. believe in the supernatural or doesn't believe the spiritual realm exists because of the mind wipe. So he actually has to recover his belief in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a restoring his faith journey, because if you think about it with the hypnotism, all of his evidence for the afterlife has been erased from his mind. So I thought at the beginning of the film with that comment, I was like, oh, that's a really cool thread to follow. And then it's not really followed up on, Mm -hmm. but if you want to, explore that it is kind of there yeah so what do you think about elise showing up at the end and what does that mean because she's dead after yeah. the first film i think that's just a nod to the lady the actress you know you put in you know some time we killed you off in the first one we brought you back for a three and four i think wishing three and four i haven't seen this it's like okay let's give her a final goodbye to just to let I think it's just there to let the audience know she's at peace. It wasn't necessary. It didn't really make any sense to me. It, um, I, I mean, yeah. from a spiritual point of view, I guess going with my religious views. So, I mean, technically, yeah, we could say if we don't go the religion route and it's just like she was so powerful with her spirit walking and everything as a human that she's able to do that as while she's dead. So, you know, it could be something like that, that she's there to protect, watch over the family. I, I don't know. Again, they just, they kind of threw it out there and didn't explain it. Yeah. Well, like, <clears throat> so when she shows up and starts talking to him, he looks at her and he doesn't really look surprised. He just kind of like has a conversation with her real quick and gets in the car and then they pan back and she's not there anymore. So obviously she's a ghost or she's just really fast and can like move. Does well, he know that she's dead? I don't think he does. Like he, okay, because I was gonna say, like, is if he knew that she was gone and that's her spirit, you think his reaction would have been a little bit more? Even though I know you, that's probably uh, still going to be a little jarring, right? He kind of asked it. He's like, "I know you." Okay, because so he remember, remember yeah, he briefly remembers. Yeah, you know, he's last still one. he's he's his memory is still wiped. Yeah, so you know that didn't doesn't. get reversed. So he does not remember meeting her, but uh, okay. he knows. I think it's the fog is cleared up enough where he knows that he's at least seen her right at some point. Okay. That but probably doesn't know she's me. dead. So that's the part with me. When I saw that, I was like, well, I think she's a ghost, but how come he's not, he's like, he's reacting like, Oh, you know, I just saw my neighbor yeah. just came outside and said, hi, you know? And I'm like, well, she's not around anymore. I think your reaction would be a little bit <laughs> more than casual. Right. But yeah. I guess it doesn't make sense if he's not remembering that she's gone. He just remembers the face. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know if she's. I kind of define a ghost as a spirit that's lost in between mm-hmm. here and the afterlife. So I don't know that she's a ghost because I take it like she's probably crossed over into the afterlife, but somehow she's figured out how to manifest back into the physical world, at least <laughs> to make appearances like this. Yeah. And again, remember, we're looking at things from a religious point of view where. The writers probably were not. They're just more looking at a supernatural. So it's like, does God let people come down and appear on the street and be like, what's up, Josh? Hey, blah, blah, blah. See ya. Peep. You know, <laughs> we have no that's idea. cool. Right. You know, if God allows that, that would be awesome. Yeah. But at the same point, the writers could just, just be putting it in just to put it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, a like lot said, of, yeah, it's a, it's a good, good buy for it. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a lot of angel, ghost, and a demon lord does overlap with religion because they kind of borrow from those things so it is in the film but maybe not intentional so we don't know we don't know what the rules are necessarily we we still can't figure that out like what are the rules of demon lore and ghost lore in this universe we have some yeah. ideas but we're not totally <laughs> sure by the end yeah yeah so i guess we should wrap this up and ask did you guys like this film do you recommend it was it satisfying? I will say, I I guess if you've seen the other ones and you're really, you know, you follow them closely, then yeah, I, I would probably say you'd enjoy this film. Now, me, I seen the first one and may have seen the second one. And if I did, it was when it first came out. So seeing this one, I know I couldn't remember hardly any of the events of the second one. And I didn't know anything about two and three or three and four. So I go in with it with a lot more questions and 
So I don't think it affected me as much as it would as somebody else who's really watching it. Now, I didn't hate the movie, but I think there's a lot of confusion. If you're not real familiar with that franchise, you can be a little confused. And that's kind of like where I walked out thinking like, I'm not really sure what I just saw. Like the jump scares were a little predictable. I, I don't ever felt like there was the only two creepy parts for me was anything that crawls and, mm. and the dude vomiting. Those were like my two like gross out moments and freaked out moments. Other than that, I don't think I was really scared. You gonna go get an MRI for fun? Now? I, no, I'm still not gonna, <laughs> not gonna do that. But um, no, I mean, I think it's, <laughs> if you're if you're a fan of the franchise, then give it a shot and, and see what you think. If you're like me and you've seen one or two, you might walk out of there not as you know excited about it. Yeah, uh, I really like part one, and I remember enjoying part two. I don't. I know I've seen it and I remember glimpses of it, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I haven't seen three or four, but this one personally, I would say wait for a video. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say that because I know movie theaters really need money right now because no one's going to theaters anymore. You know, and if we're going to change things up, I'm, I'm all for changing things up. But at the same point right now, we're still getting movies in movies theaters. So, uh, however, you know, it's a review not to save Hollywood. So, <laughs> yeah, I would say wait till video because as much as I liked how the movie, where the movie was going, they could have added another 20 minutes easily and just made this a much better movie. I mean, right now it's sitting at a C minus. You add 20 minutes to it. That explains a few things, brings some more light to the characters, throwing a decent jump scare, and it's an eight months. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a solid story that just was and who knows it's when it comes out of video, maybe there's like forty five minutes of deleted scenes. Yeah. And all of a sudden we got a two and a half hour movie that's amazing. Yeah. You know, it had that. I always forget the actor's name, but um, the main actor. Josh, um, this was his directorial debut, and it was great. Yeah, very good you star. Know, yeah, it was, you know, the cinematography was solid. The acting was you really know, good. The acting right? was good. You know, like I said, the jump scares were a little predictable. I did like when he was running back to save Chris, and that thing was crawling. I didn't after like him. that part. It was <laughs> creepy. I like I that scare. That, that, was, that was probably the creepiest. It wasn't a jump scare. It was just like, ah, facing the door. <laughs> yeah, or what is uh, that? It just... I agree with yeah. that. It, it, it add a little bit more and clean it up because it was a little jumbled. It was a little incoherent mm -hmm. in some areas. And if you could just clean that up just a little bit. Yeah, it's like, it you know, been how, could, how was Chris able to be choked by a ghost? That's never right. happened in the frame. Well, I haven't seen three and four, but I'm, I'm just going one, two, five. That's what this story is. So in parts one and two, there wasn't a ghost that physically hurt somebody on the outside that I remember, at least. My apologies. Please comment below if that if I'm wrong. But yeah, and then all of a sudden it's just like <clears throat> I'm getting choked. I have nothing to do with this. I'm not even related to these people. Boom, you know. So it's like, what are the rules to that? Why is it? You know, that would be that's that's where you bring in an expert, and they're like, oh, the demon's getting stronger now, and it's getting to the pinnacle because this is the last move. So you got to make this the biggest, you know. So yeah, it makes sense that he's able to choke her now. But explain that. He's getting stronger. He's, you know, becoming much more powerful. It's easier for him to jump out and all this stuff. So it's like, do something with that. Because all we did for the past hour and 20, 18 minutes or whatever is kind of come up with our own theories. Yeah. We need a tangina you know, of yeah. this movie. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've got four different ways this movie can go. And all of them I think would be decent. And if they shot it like that, it would have made that movie a minus. But yeah, I would say... If you don't go to a matinee, wait for a video. Uh, you don't want to spend 12 bucks to go see this movie, personally. Yeah. But, you know, that's just me. Nathan. Yeah, and I thought the movie was interesting, but I have to borrow from theology and my understanding of maybe the first movie and astral projection to make this movie interesting. I had to follow the psychology more than the horror of the movie to engage with it. So it was easy for me to engage, but it's because of my background knowledge on the material, not self-contained movie knowledge, right? And I could see maybe some links, like we're talking about what were those 
demons that were climbing towards Dalton's body at the end? And why did they appear to have physical bodies? How did they do that? Because a demon doesn't have a physical body. That's why it possesses people. So why did they not look like spirits and instead looked like physical bodies? I get why they were crawling towards Dalton based on the first movie, because it was said that I think they're attracted to his life force when he's astral projecting or his body being yeah. open and vacant. And that's what they want to climb into so they can become physical, but they look physical before they climb into the body. So, so what do you have physical body for? Maybe they're supposed to metaphorically represent a spirit, but they, they could have found some way to explain that visually, make him look a little bit wavy or something yeah. like this is a spirit getting ready to climb into the body. Cause we don't even know just from this film What's going to happen when they get to the body? Are they going to kill him? Are they going to climb into the body? We don't know. And I was okay with the demon trying to choke Chris just because of what we talked about earlier, how spirits seem to be able to, from theology, again, manifest in the physical world briefly to move things, to appear. But again, if they appear... I guess an angel. Well, an angel is different from a demon. You know, an angel, they can appear and pass off as a human in biblical thinking. Maybe that's what was going on with those demons appearing, but I, I would have liked to see them look more ghostly so that it's obvious that they don't have a body. Right. And that they're trying to possess. There are two things I think this movie could really improve. One is explain how that beast or what or ghost or whatever that appears in the mri machine explain how that ties into the plot and why it's important somehow right is that pivotal in josh's investigation because you could they needed a scare there but you could cut that and still have the dad appearing to him and the plot loses nothing right so i want to know how that ties in and what that it was and i also want to know i think we know who possessed dalton we think it was parker but they just showed a flash of Parker in the further, like attacking Dalton. And they didn't show which demon went into the body. They could have cleared that up for us and for other viewers. So we didn't have to sit here and parse it out. Right. Overall, I liked the movie quite a bit. I found it really satisfying, especially since I, I liked one. I hated part two. But this movie kind of redeemed part two in my eyes and made me actually want to go back and see the ties between the two. So if you didn't like part two and you stopped, you should still check out this movie if you liked part one. So this movie's close to on par with part one, but just know it's not the scariest movie you've ever seen. You need to look at the psychology of the film a little bit and that will make it more interesting to you. So I recommend it, and I recommend going to the theater for it. It's killing it at the box office this weekend. Today is Sunday morning, and as of yesterday, it was leading the weekend over Indiana Jones 5 and everything and else by quite a bit. That's, so. that's not right. <laughs> that is the trailer's fault. Whoever cut the trailer for Indiana Jones 5 should be fired. No offense, you'd do a lot better than I would. <laughs> but I'm not working for Hollywood. Yeah, because, yeah, that trailer, I did not want to see that movie because of the trailer. I've seen it twice. It's amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to go see it because Drew said so. Me too. But I had the same feelings when I saw the trailer. Yeah. So, well, was, we will see if anything else comes out of the Insidious franchise. Because Patrick Wilson says they feel like the story is complete, but they're open to returning down the road. I also heard that they might do a crossover. Yes, with Sinister. With Sinister. Which they, could be interesting they started talking about that yeah yeah oh god that was the best horror movie i've seen in 20 years that was great probably longer they've been talking about a crossover for a few years and i think they were considering that before this movie so this may this movie is probably going to make enough money that they're probably going to do something so we'll see they need to bring eat the hot oh i think there's also a couple spinoffs that they're working on too with like mandy moore and somebody else so Well, if you thought this was an interesting discussion, we will have more podcasts coming up soon. Hit like and subscribe to our channel, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you. See ya.